Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please take this time to silence all electronic devices. Photographic and recording devices are strictly prohibited. Welcome to the annual Let Freedom Ring celebration, jointly hosted by the Kennedy Center and Georgetown University as part of the university's ongoing Let Freedom Ring initiative, honoring the legacy of Dr. King. Please welcome the Let Freedom Ring Choir, the New Works Band, along with members of the Georgetown University Jazz Ensemble, the official cast of the national touring production, Stirring the Waters, and in his 17th year as music producer of Let Freedom Ring, Nolan Williams, Jr. For the day, anamnesis. anamnesis. Yeah, the recollection or remembrance of the past. Anamnesis, according to Plato, is the recollection of the ideas in which a soul had known in a previous existence, especially by means of reasoning. But when reasoning has faltered, when the soul of a people or a nation has willfully or woefully forgotten, then there must be an anamnesis, a proactive process of countering the antithesis of anamnesis, amnesia. So we must go back to remember what our country was like 50, 60 years ago, to return to our previous days of soul reasoning. <laughs> must go back and draw unto ourselves the memory of the people and places, the protest and the progress that once empowered us in our strivings to become a more perfect union.
lest we slip any further into the amnesic abyss. Lest we slip any further into divided states of amnesic abyss. Please welcome Jordan Brown, a sophomore in Georgetown College, majoring in sociology and African American studies, who will be giving tonight's invocation. Hi, everyone. Please pray with me. Father, we are gathered here today as a community that strives to mirror your perfect kingdom a kingdom abounding in love for you and other people, regardless of who they are. We gather today to honor the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the ground-shaking work he dedicated his life to. We are thankful that you have called others to continue his work by following in his footsteps of love and compassion. Lord, many people struggle to see the path you have laid before them to walk. It can be difficult to accept that your path can be full of heartache, pain, and suffering, but even harder to understand that beneath all of this, there is an unshakable joy that comes from our calling. Our calling to help heal the broken, uplift the downtrodden, and let your miracles shine through us, regardless of who we are or how broken we are. Today, we are thankful for those who are being honored. Coach John Thomas Jr. and this evening's award recipient, Sandra Jackson. We are thankful for their dedication, compassion, charity, and sacrifice. In honor of Sandra's work, we especially pray for victims and perpetrators of domestic abuse and sexual assault. We pray that you surround these people in your love, and we ask that you continue to allow those who are a light in the face of such violence to continue shining. We also ask you, Lord, for the voices in the Let Freedom Ring Choir and our special guest, Shaka Khan. May their beautiful gift of music touch our hearts in new ways. We are thankful for their gifts and the time they have spent in preparation. Let their voices rejuvenate and inspire us to go forward and continue on our paths to bring light wherever we go. We pray that you continue to bless us and keep us through this evening, this week, and the months to come. We pray that you continue to do your amazing work so that we can continue to do ours. These things we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mark Bamudi Joseph, Vice President and Artistic Director of Social Impact, the Kennedy Center. Peace, y'all. How you doing? Yeah? Uh, Ava DuVernay says, if your dream is only about you, it's too small. My fellow healers, I speak to you standing just a few miles from historic dreaming. I speak to you from the day after, from a dreamscape of clashing visions, accelerating time, and diminishing returns, from a post-dream mind state, a lush post-dream haze, fertile and cellular and strangely at odds with a landscape of scorched earth. I speak to you in the shadow of a king on the day after freedom ring, the day after free at last. My fellow healers, I ask you to consider the work it takes to live the dream at scale. Think of the dream as a kind of cultural currency. And to that extent, the consequences of not doing the work are too big to fail. Healers, let's talk about equity. 
Not equity like we all out here in the house. Equity like what you've invested in your house, invested in your children. What do we wish to reap from cultural equity? And how do we keep that stock high? We all dream of the beautiful democracy, and truth is, racial equity is the price. Truth is, you might could buy more with a lie. Truth is, if now ain't a good time for the truth, I don't see when we'll get to it. And so, the dreamers wake. The dreamers wake and get to it. It is incumbent on all human beings to oppose injustice in every form, and that is the truth. The public, the public is an idea, and that idea is in need of representation, symbols of our aspiration, avatars of our moral commitment to be better, avatars like kings, symbols like dreams, and brass tacks like labor and shared risk, the drawing of maps, and then walking the path from truth to racial healing to transformation, to move our community forward, to break bread in affinity, to know that you're not preaching to the choir, you're galvanizing the committed. The work, the work, of rebuilding the village, healing ourselves, seeing ourselves. Justice is not a surprise waiting for you behind curtain number two on The Price is Right. <laughs> Justice itself comes at a steep price. It comes at the steep price of committed energy and time and self-sacrifice to help assure somebody else's rights. Now, don't that sound like the echo of a dream? A waking memory on the morning after? A vision of the situationship between re broken relationships and broken economies? A circle of unbroken trust? Is that not what we mean by cultural equity? We're all different, but we all us. Healers, on the day after the words hung in the maw of the Capitol like August heat, there remains still a moral infrastructure to rebuild, a moral compass to hold steady. Following the transformative vision came the transformative action, healing through art, social design, cultural leadership, authentic vulnerability, course correction. King's talk was intellectual capital that bought the transformative path he walked, cultural equity. Healers, next time somebody uses that word at work, uh, consider it as King implies he did. Equity measured against an index of self-love. A self-love that doesn't involve the hatred of anyone else. Hmm? A love... A love of self based on what one can make, how, feels, how one feels under the light of the sun. A self-love that doesn't involve the fear of not a single solitary anyone. A self-love where everybody's safe. Freedom is not fate. History leaves scars. Healing is not preordained. The king lit up the DC sky, then came back to earth, and on the day after went back to doing the dream work. Truth, racial healing, transformation, the capital gains of community catharsis, the moral economy fueled by cultural equity, shared risk, shared company. On the day after the dream comes the dream work. Truth, racial healing, transformation, the mountaintop view of dreaming together in public. My friends, my friends, my name is Bamuti. I have the great honor of uh, working here at the Kennedy Center. Um, this space um, is ours to heal in to grow in, to love in. And I love that y'all are here today. <laughs> Real talk. On, on behalf of the Kennedy Center, I would like to thank Georgetown University and its president, Jack DeJoya, for 18 years of partnership. 
Uh, please join me in congratulating Sandra Jackson, the executive director of House of Ruth. Sandra Jackson is tonight's recipient of the John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award. Um, tonight's program is part of the Millennium Stage. Shout out to all my peoples and social impact. Millennium Stage has uh, offered two decades of free daily performances enabling audiences in DC and around the world to experience the arts. Millennium Stage is not possible without our presenting sponsor. Uh, I would like to thank the Centene Charitable Foundation and our co-sponsors, yes, uh, Target and the J. Willard and Alice S. Marriott Foundation. Uh, thank you, for real. Not only for uh, making great art possible and accessible, but also for making sure that I got a job in this piece. <laughs> Thank you, Centene, for real. And shout out to Nolan Williams, uh, co-chair. Yes, my dude. Uh, co-chair of the Community Advisory Board and a social practice resident and the incredible Let Freedom Ring Choir. Uh, it's gonna be a special night. It's gonna be a special night, so I'm out of here. Y'all, please welcome next um, Wade Rakes, the Regional Vice President and Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer at the Centene Corporation. Peace, enjoy. Thank you, Mark, and good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Centene Corporation, and the Centene Charitable Foundation. I'd like to thank the Kennedy Center and Georgetown University for hosting us this evening, especially Deborah Rudder, David Rubenstein, and Jack DeGioia. We have an incredible night ahead of us, and I am honored to share in celebration with the amazing talents of Shaka Khan, <laughs> Nolan Williams, Jr., and the Let Freedom Ring Choir. Since its founding as a single local health plan in 1984, Centene's heart and soul has been linked to the health of the communities we serve. We focus on the whole health of an individual, not just their immediate medical needs. We believe that performing arts and creative, creative experiences enrich lives through social, emotional, and physical growth. Centene has provided support for countless arts organizations, not only in our hometown of St. Louis, Missouri, but throughout the country in order to enhance the well-being of our nation. This Kennedy Center holds a special place in our hearts as one of the nation's premier cultural centers. We are a proud partner in the center's mission of producing and presenting an unmatched variety of performing arts that connects audience and artists together. It is through this work that we are able to better connect to our communities, both near and far. Hearing new voices, sharing fresh ideas, and fostering an inclusive environment are principles we stand for in every aspect of business. With the opening of the REACH just a few months ago, we know the future is bright and we look forward to many wonderful years ahead. <clears throat> Tonight we are here to celebrate and remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr and his inspirational legacy that continues to motivate the American spirit towards love, peace, and humanity. As we enjoy the wonderful performance ahead, let us remember Dr. King's call for freedom, equality, and service. May we find ways in each of our own lives to act upon these ideals. On behalf of everyone at Centene, thank you for letting us join you this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Nolan Williams. The gentlemen who have come before me, 
uh, especially to Mark, and I'll say a bit more about that. I want to just share a few thoughts, and I promise I'll be brief. I'm, I'm honored to serve as music producer of Let Freedom Ring this year, and I'm grateful to President Jack DeJoya and to all of my friends at Georgetown for this partnership that is now in its 17th year. They've been doing it for 18, they've been doing it with me for 17. <laughs> and for those of you who have attended this program before, you know that each year Georgetown, I'm so honored, commissions me to compose or arrange a new work that speaks to the themes of civil rights and social justice. And about two years ago, I started seriously looking at this body of work that I've created through the years and started asking the question like, what, what, do I, what should I do with this? In fact, I started feeling convicted that I needed to do something with this music. And so it, it really honors me this evening to be able to share with you from this stage that many of the songs that I've created for Let Freedom Ring have been adapted into a new theatrical concert production that I'm calling Stirring the Waters Across America. In fact, the song that opened our show tonight, uh, featuring our Let Freedom Ring Choir and our national cast, is actually the opening song from that production. I sure hope you enjoyed it. I'm so excited to uh, be showcasing our cast this weekend. Uh, they have been featured in performance uh, at the Washington National Cathedral yesterday for the MLK program, and they're here tonight. And I want you to know that uh, the tour will begin next month. The full production of Stirring the Waters Across America will debut uh, in Nashville, Tennessee at Vanderbilt University's Langford Auditorium on Friday, February the 28th. With this production, we will be able to carry lessons about the civil rights movement across this great nation of ours evoking the spirit of King to foster much needed dialogue about race and social justice, because I just believe that let freedom ring needs to be more than just a day. And so I want to especially thank um, the Kennedy Center, Deborah Rudder and Robert Van Leer, Mark Bermuthi Joseph, my brother, Ariel Davis, um, and all the others who have caught hold of the vision for this project. As, as Mark uh, alluded, I was extended a social impact arts residency last year by the center. And when I was bestowed that honor, I said immediately, I know exactly the project I wanna work on. And since the fall of last year, the center has extended just incredible support to our national casting call and actually helped us to produce a full workshop of this project, which has uh, set this project uh, on the trajectory to start our tour. I'm especially proud that uh, Stirring the Waters Across America has become one of the first new works to be developed here through the Kennedy Center's expansion project, The Reach. I also want to thank uh, Del Mott and Edgewood Ventures for partnering with my company, New Works Productions, to make this tour a reality. And finally, I want to appeal to all of you to connect with us through our website, newworksproductions.com. That's New Works with one W, productions with an S, dot com, to follow the progress of this project and to offer your support. And on Friday, February 28th, if you happen to be in Nashville, or if you happen to want to make your way to Nashville, Hope that you will join us as we initiate this movement. It's more than a production, it's a movement. And God knows we need a movement uh, that's positive for change right about now. So if you can't come, please help us spread the word to your friends and, and frenemies in and around Nashville. Listen, we need everybody coming to, together to have conversations. Even with folk we don't like, we need to be talking these days. Together, we can stir the waters of our nation towards a more progressive future. How many of you believe that? 
So in that spirit, please receive now the Let Freedom Ring Choir, the New Works Band, and students from Georgetown University, and our national touring cast of Stirring the Waters uh, Across America. And let me just take a minute to acknowledge our student soloist from uh, Georgetown University, Brother Jalen Francis, who played that amazing alto saxophone. So please receive uh, the choir and the, stu uh, the national uh, touring cast of Stirring the Waters Across America performing another work from the show. This work is, uh, is titled Walk in Montgomery Like Jericho. And I think the words and the setting will speak for itself. Thank you all so much for your presence and for braving the code. Let freedom ring. Legend has it that she was too tired to give up her seat that first morning of December 1955. But in her own words, Rosa Parks said, That isn't true. I was not tired physically. The only tired I was was tired of giving in. But Rosa wasn't alone. She was a part of a collective group of strong black women who refused to give up their seats. Women like... Claudette Colvin, Aurelia Browder Coleman, Susie McDonald, Mary Louise Smith, Joanne Robinson, Jeanette Reese. These and other women troubled the waters. They set up a boycott that brought power to our, to our dollars when withdrawn from an oppressive system. Walk in Montgomery like Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Walk in Montgomery like Jericho, the segregation walls come down. Walk in Montgomery like Jericho, 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 walk in Montgomery like Jericho, the segregation walls come down. Let's talk about unfair seeding, how we play the same way to ride. That's why Rose and Antoinette refuse to move. That's why we walk till change comes back. Good Lord.
Ladies and gentlemen, John J. DeJoya, the 48th president of Georgetown University. Well, good evening. And it's a pleasure to be with all of you for our annual Let Freedom Ring concert as we gather to honor and reaffirm the extraordinary vision and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Just a few moments ago, we heard from Nolan Williams, our terrific music producer, from the national touring cast of Stirring the Waters Across America, and from our Let Freedom Ring Choir, who performed an original song inspired by the actions of the Montgomery bus boycott and the 13-month protest against segregation on public bus buses in 1955 in 1956. In his first address as the newly appointed president of the Montgomery Improvement Association, where he helped to lead the association in their decision to pursue the boycott, Dr. King opened his reflections with these words. I quote, we are here because first and foremost, we are American citizens and we are determined to apply our citizenship to the fullness of its meaning. We are here also because of our love for democracy, because of our deep-seated belief that democracy transformed from thin paper to thick action is the greatest form of government on earth." Close quote. Well, each of us, all of us, share in this responsibility to apply our citizenship to the fullness of its meaning, to pursue the actions required of us to fully realize the American promise, the American project, the American dream. We've come together today to remember all that Dr. King asked of us. From these first words calling for the fulfillment of our promise as a nation, words that helped launch the Civil Rights Movement, to his urgent challenge in the year before his assassination for global unity against, quote, racism, extreme materialism, and militarism through a true revolution of values, close quote. We recognize Dr. King's vision for our country and our world today as we honor the contributions of a leader in our community, Coach John Thompson, Jr., who has exemplified what it means to address issues of racial justice, equality, and opportunity in our nation. For 17 years, we have presented the John Thompson, Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award to a leader who embodies the values of Dr. King and the leadership of Coach Thompson. This year, we are privileged to recognize the extraordinary contributions of Dr. Sandra Jackson, who leads the House of Ruth, serving more than 1,000 women and children in Washington, D.C. each year. <laughs> providing resources and a safe place to call home as they heal from experiences of trauma and abuse. We've prepared a brief film that shares Coach Thompson's story and the dedicated work of Sandra Jackson at the House of Ruth. Let's now turn to our film. Georgetown University has presented the John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award since 2003 to celebrate the extraordinary contributions of Washington, D.C.'s most inspirational community leaders. The award is given in the name of a man who himself is a mentor, advocate, and leader, Georgetown's former head men's basketball coach, John Thompson, Jr. Born in Washington, D.C., John Thompson, Jr. grew up loving sports and realized early on that athletics could be a gateway to larger opportunity. My first love was not basketball. My first love in sports were boxing and baseball. I was getting taller and taller, and the older guys, they said, put down that baseball. 
if you want an opportunity to go to school, you better get yourself on a basketball court. Thompson led his high school to multiple championships and earned a scholarship to Providence College. I ended up playing for the Boston Celtics, and you know, you saw a lot of things that you hadn't seen before you were exposed to a lot of things, which created an interest in education to me. You know, I wanted to be educated so that I could help. John Thompson was hired in 1972 as the men's basketball coach at Georgetown, where he became the first African-American college basketball coach to win the NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Championship in 1984. My coaching was the instrument I used to teach with. I thought, really, that you had freedom in coaching. Coach also led his team to success off the court with a 97% graduation rate and he kept a deflated basketball on his desk to remind players that the game wouldn't last forever. He used his position to advocate for the causes important to him. In 1989, the NCAA put forward Proposition 42, with implications for athletic eligibility that would disproportionately harm students from disadvantaged backgrounds. Because of the success we were having as a basketball coach, and me being an African-American, I had an obligation to say something about it, so I did. Coach Thompson became one of its most visible opponents and walked off the court in protest, boycotting two games. He helped bring the issue to national attention and eventually led the NCAA to modify the proposition. It is hard to put into words the kind of impact that Coach John Thompson Jr. has had on our community. He has held us to a greater expectation of ourselves, of who we are, and who we could be. It is in honor of Coach Thompson that we present this year's Legacy of a Dream Award to Sandra Jackson, Executive Director of House of Ruth, an organization that empowers women and families in Washington, D.C. to rebuild their lives and heal from trauma, abuse, and homelessness. My journey to this work it really has a lot to do with my mother. She had a heart and she cared for people. I do believe that without that heart, I could not be successful in this work. Sandra joined House of Ruth in 2013 and became executive director in 2016, bringing with her over 30 years of experience as a trained social worker and a lifelong commitment to helping those in need. Sandra Jackson is the very embodiment of a servant leader. She comes to leadership from a, from a point of service. I would describe Sandra as extraordinary. She is determined. Uh, she is committed. She's extremely compassionate. She is also highly collaborative. Since 1976, House of Ruth has helped more than 13,000 women, children, and families through comprehensive and individualized care. To see children uh, come into our programs and moms come into our programs and think that they may not be able to ever achieve some of the dreams that they have. And then to see that change as a result of the support, the services. That's why I'm here. That's why I will be here. Under Sandra's leadership, House of Ruth embarked on its first capital campaign with the goal of raising $7 million for a new home for kids space their trauma-informed daycare center. It is this sense of vision and drive that has made Sandra a leader in Washington, D.C., and a champion for the families that she serves. She saw the intersection of domestic violence and homelessness and brought together the kinds of resources that make a difference, uh, advocated for that in the community and among agencies to support it. But those efforts are special, and that's Sandra. To be honored with an award named after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and John Thompson is just pivotal. I believe sometimes we're given a platform to use it to help others, and they both did that. And I try to do that with my platform. And now please join me and Coach Thompson in recognizing the 2020 John Thompson Jr. Legacy of a Dream Award recipient, 
Ms. Sandra Jackson and the House of Ruth. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the show. This artist is one of the world's most gifted and celebrated music icons. She has influenced generations of music creators. She's a singer, songwriter, actor, author, philanthropist, entrepreneur, and activist. Ladies and gentlemen, stand to your feet. I said stand to your feet. And please welcome the 10-time Grammy Award winner, the legendary Shaka
Those are turning out to be the best songs uh, through time. Let's give Rufus a thought. And, um, they're still alive. Uh, this song's called Tell Me Something Good. If you know the words, <laughs> feel free to sing along with us.
one of my favorite uh, little everlasting love. Williams. Let, let Freedom Ring, Let Freedom Ring Choir is going to sing. Uh, or I'm going to sing with them, <laughs> more likely. Uh, a, a song that um, I wrote. It's called I Believe. And of course, it's dedicated to Dr. King today. His legacy. <laughs> Nothing is promised us, 
as we walk on this plane can be cruel and dangerous so what have you to gain by being so rough haven't you had enough you've never been anything to deserve how you treat your sin you can stop wondering something that's special special young people like this younger people like this it's great and I really enjoy it thank you very much so do you <laughs> all of you look fabulous out there to me I mean from what I'm seeing yeah I'm looking at it okay uh, oh Excuse me. All of you look beautiful. And y'all too. Oh, 
Ain't it nobody? <laughs> Ain't nobody.